Hello, and welcome back to the Stationary Dev. Today we have another fountain pen review. Uh, this is one that was I wasn't really planning on buying, but it has been on my radar for a while, um, and now it looks to be largely discontinued. And I found a great deal on it, so went ahead and pulled the trigger. Um, this is the going to be a review of the Cross Peerless One Two Five Platinum Metalist fountain pen. A uh, little bit of a mouthful there, um, but we'll take a look at it. This pen, specific pen, uh, celebrates or is meant to celebrate two events in Cross's history. One is their 1889 debut of their original Peerless pen, and then the other one is the introduction of their Century line in 1935. So they've been around for a while. You've probably heard of Cross pens. Um, they do have like a legacy in in the pen and fountain pen world. Um, as far as the packaging goes, you can see it's pretty uh, simple, just a little um, nice looking cardboard box with the cross logo in there, established in 1846, the USA. When we open it up inside, we get a little foam piece and we have the pen. Some cross branding there on the top of the box, that's sort of the, uh, let me see that, that is going to be like the... Um, use and care guide probably yeah so you get this whole big thing about cross pins this is the use and care guide in some languages and stuff just telling you how to fill the pen all that so nothing too exciting but it does come in a little cool little thing that's sort of hidden in the top of the box there and I'm just going to put that in there for later. Uh, the bottom, usually this pen comes with a uh, two, two cartridges and a converter. Um, but mine, I bought it secondhand, so it didn't come with any of that already. So that's all I have in terms of packaging. And let's get on to the pen. So here is the Cross Peerless 125 Platinum metalist it's a it's a pretty pen um it has it's called the platinum metalist because it, the body of it the silver part is platinum plated and the it has gold trim or so the gold trim is for the metalist metalist part the metalist trim and then platinum because it's the the body itself is platinum plated at the top here you'll see if i can get it to focus we have a Swarovski crystal that's in the finial of the pen there. So kind of like a crown jewel. There's a little serial code there, but crown jewel for the pen there sort of sets it apart. This one is um, sort of a black crystal there, which is kind of interesting. Then for the rest of the pen, uh, you can see the body. Um, if I sort of try to get it close to the camera where it'll zoom into the body. It's got a guilloche pattern to the pen, to the silver part that goes the length of the pen. It um, doesn't really have, it has a little bit of texture on the touch, but it's, it's not, um, it's mostly smooth. So if, if I was blindfolded, I might not could tell that it was guilloche, but it's a cool pattern and it's a smaller guilloche than some larger ones that I've seen. And so it gives a, a cool effect to the pen. Um, for the, the styling of it, it's kind of a, a bulbous, I don't know if the camera does a good, good enough job, but it's kind of a bulbous sort of uh, statement making design. It's unique from their other sort of sleek styles and most of their other lines are all sort of about sleek and simple and sort of elegant. This one's sort of a statement maker, uh, but it's it's a very handsome pen though. If it looks good if it's sitting in a in a journal or you know something like that. It, it is a handsome pen. It has a spring loaded clip. You can kind of see it there. Um, pretty firm, but spring loaded, which is nice. The clip itself is branded with the cross logo there, and it's sort of this bent bent clip design. Um, but it works well. Uncapped. Uh, well, you can also see the branding around the 
uh, the the band here, which says Cross Peerless One Two Five. So the name of the pen, and then the the end cap is just a solid gold, um, not solid gold, but gold colored metal, um, and it's a solid piece of metal in there. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't turn. Doesn't doesn't do anything. Just for looks. Um, uncapped, it takes about one and three quarters turns. So let's see, there's one full turn and about three quarters. So one and three quarters turns, you get the cap off. I did notice it is plastic threads on on metal threads. So um, take that what you will. But it is it is very smooth. I don't hit you know feel any grinding or anything like that. Um, which gets us to the section. As you can see, it is a smooth, convex, sort of curved outward um, plastic section. So it it's a plastic section. It does have sort of some, you know, metally trims. A little lip right there. No step up really right here. They did really good on the sort of transition to the pin. There's no real step up. And the threads are pretty much not noticeable. They're, they're very minimal. Uh, so it, it does feel good. So minimal minimal thread interference there. Um, it's not a heavy pen, so it might look like a you know all metal pen that's really heavy, but it's not really heavy. And you'll see why. You kind of already got an idea from the cap there that it's got a plastic insert behind the metal. Um, but most of the weight comes from the gold parts, which are solid pieces of of uh, metal so the top of the cap here solid and the end cap here solid that's where most of the weight comes from uh, all the silver or the platinum plated parts are as literally a thin sheet of metal and it has a plastic insert which we'll see when we open up the barrel here in a minute um it feels good in the hand because this part is so solid it kind of back weights it a little bit but um which might be a problem if you, you know, hold it way up here. But for me, when I have it resting in my hand, it feels comfortable. So it's not, it's not, um, doesn't take away from the feel or the writing of the pen for me. Um, and it, it posts securely, but it is a little bit chunky if you're posting and does add more weight to the back of the pen. So, I wouldn't post it. It's a bigger pen anyway. I don't think you need to post it unless you just unless you absolutely just want to. Um, but it feels good in the hand. At address, it feels secure. It feels comfortable. Um, you know, I can I can write for a long time with this pen. The nib, as you got a little look at earlier, is actually made by Sailor. So this is a Sailor nib. It is an 18 karat gold Sailor nib which is different than their usual 21 karat and 14 karat gold nibs that they do for their own pens. Um, it's the only 18 karat gold nib that I know of that Sailor does, which is interesting. It makes it a unique uh, nib on the market there. And uh, it's only available in limited sizes, so I've mainly only seen fine and medium in the Peerless. Maybe there was a broad too, but, but um, a lot of places only had fine or only had fine and medium. So it, it does have limited sizes, doesn't have the full range of nib sizes. Um, it's as you can see, it's branded cross peerless one, two, five, and then 18 karat gold, and then the gold content there, 750. And it's the same size as their 21 karat nib. So it's the same size as a Pro Gear or a 1911 large nib. So it's it's not a, any bigger. Or anything than their usual 21 karat gold nibs. Same profile and everything. Same shape, same profile. It's a sailor nib there. Um, the If we open up the barrel, we'll see a couple things. First one, we have, again, we have metal threads on plastic threads. And you can see what I'm talking about. So in the barrel, this it actually has a really thick um, plastic insert. You can kind of see it there. Maybe I can get it to zoom in a little bit, but you can kind of see that thick plastic insert that goes pretty much all the way back to here, which means that this silver part is just a really thin piece of, of metal that they've platinum plated uh, for the pen. 
So that's what takes that's what makes it a lighter pen for me. It doesn't have the heft that I I imagined it might, uh, which was surprising for me. But I don't mind it. It still feels great and writes great. Um, I just probably wouldn't put it in you know a bag or anything and fear that this might get dented because it is so such a thin piece of of metal. Um. <clears throat> It accepts for the converter. Cross has basically two styles of converter. They have a screw-in type and a push-in type, and they do not, you can't put a push-in type and a screw-in type, or you can't put a screw-in type and a push-in type. Um, so just make sure you get the right converter. I had to buy, purchase this converter. The pin didn't come with a converter for me. So I had to purchase this screw-in converter from Cross, which they are very expensive. They're about $16 a piece which is outrageous for a converter, um, and they're difficult to find, so it's hard to find a place that sells it um, reliably. Um, but I can say for the cross converters, because I have another cross pen uh, that has a converter with the push-in converter, but I can say of the cross converters, they are well-made, and they do hold you know, a good, a good chunk of ink. So, uh, I mean, you do get something that'll last, at least. Uh, but they are expensive and hard to find. So overall, uh, with the pen, I'm a little disappointed with the weight and the build quality with the plastic on metal threads and the um, sort of plastic sleeve, the sort of thin outer coating, but I can tell that it is, you know, still seems to be like a very solid pen. It's a very handsome pen. It seems to be well made. It's definitely well, well balanced for me, a very comfortable pen for me to use if I'm using it in the hand. Uh, it's still very comfortable. So I think it's still a good pen. Now, what to ink this with? I didn't know what to ink it with, really. So I'm going for a comfort pick, and I'm going to ink it with some Colorverse Dark Energy, which is one of my all-time favorite inks. But I don't have a reddish or a brownish ink and rotation at the moment, so this one is up. I keep them in this box. Um, this one's empty. You can tell how much I like the ink because I've already emptied a bottle of it. So I'm on to the big bottle now. Put all of this back together. Colorverse, by the way, I need more Colorverse inks, but they're very cool inks. They come with a gift pack and uh, all kinds of cool stuff with Colorverse ink. Shout out to Colorverse. I need more of their inks because this is the only one that I actually own of theirs, but it, I love it. Like I said, it's one of my top inks ever. And to fill this one, I guess I'll just do the draw method just because I don't want to fiddle with unscrewing and screwing the converter itself. So before I make a mess, let me get some napkins, paper towel, whatever I could find to help clean up. Ugh. There we go. And hopefully you can see a little bit of what's about to go on. Let me try to get the focus to help. Tip it in. I'll do one more. Get it full of some ink. Like I said, the, the cross converters, albeit expensive and hard to find and hard to find the right model, they are good converters. It's a very smooth piston. There's no resistance or anything to it. Um, they feel good. So shout out to the cross converters for actually working, even though they cost a lot. Because it'd be different if they cost a lot and they were crummy converters but there we go close enough got the nib got ink that's about the fill I got I probably could have done better but not gonna worry about it the pen closed up here and get the ink closed up and then I'll try to find some paper Do our sample. 
Okay, so for our running sample, we have our Rodia 80GSM pad here. I'm going to kind of bring you down to level with it. Here's our pen. And let's see how it writes. It's a Sailor nib, so a Sailor Fine nib, which is one of my favorites, so it should, should be good. We have the Cross Peerless 1, 2, 5. Platinum Medalist. It is a 18 carat Sailor Fine Nib. The ink we got. Is colorverse dark energy kind of between a red and a brown but one of my favorites so far so good we'll do our sentence and then I'll let you know what I'm thinking so far so we have So, so far, it, it feels like a Sailor nib. Um, it's, it's smooth, but it has some audible feedback. You could probably hear that. So it has that audible feedback from Sailor nibs, but it is, it is very smooth. The feed is keeping up. No problems at all with that. Um, it's the, the line width that you would expect from a Sailor Fine. It's a really nice nib. I'm liking it a lot. Um writes in all directions here like I said the line width is is normal uh, wetness pretty wet once again sailor nibs for me are, are pretty wet anyways um, so this one is doing good right on par with what I would expect from a sailor nib um, line variation You can kind of be the judge there. Maybe you get a little bit, but I think mostly it's just more wet. It does have, uh, from what I'm feeling with the writing, I mean, you can see, it does have just a little bit of bounce to it. Not a lot. I think their 21 karat golds maybe have a little bit more bounce to them, but and it's still a firm nib, it's not a flex nib or anything, but it does have just a little bit of give to it that, that gives it a good feel. The pen itself is comfortable in my hand when I'm writing with it. I'm not having to fight the pen. It, it, it kind of disappears in my hand and I can just focus on the nib and on the paper. Um, everything's, everything's good with it, I think. Um, so like I said, Pretty similar to the Sailor 21 karat nibs. Maybe the 21 karats are a little bit more flexible, but I can't tell much of a difference. Um, but it feels great. I mean, it's a Sailor nib on a big pen, the big metal pen, which is unique. And it, and it feels great to write with. It feels like I'm in control. Um, yeah, it feels like I can write a lot with this pen. So, conclusions. And here we get to things like price and, and, and stuff with this pen. So number one, this retailed when it was sold, because I can tell right now it's discontinued, it retailed for around over $600 for a pen for this model specifically. Um, but last I could see, you could buy it for around $480. Um, but even for that price point, I feel it's definitely overpriced for um, sort of the build quality for me is a little overpriced. It is a Sailor nib and, and it is full metal and it's platinum plated and, and it, you know, it's a big pen. So it, it might start approaching 400 in terms of, of uh, you know, being worth it. 
but I think for 600, it's definitely over, you know, overpriced and around 480 upper 400s. It's, it's still, I think a little bit overpriced. Uh, but for what I got mine for, I found this thing for $250 on eBay. I thought it was too good to be true. I messaged the seller and made sure it was the fountain pen and not the roller ball. And uh, basically I just lucked out with this style. Uh, one good thing though, and so for me, with the with the twenty two hundred fifty dollars, is absolutely worth it. It's a it's a steal for that. I think it's more worth it around, uh, you know, three hundred and fifty dollars and under if you can find one for that price. You know, snatch it up. It's it's a good deal. Uh, it's a well built pen. It's it's beautiful, handsome pen. All of the finishes are really really great on the Peerless. They have a blue one. They have a gray one, or a titanium gray one. Um, they have, there's a gold one, there's a Darth Vader limited edition one. So they're, they're all really, really stunning, really good, really nice finishes. They all come with the sailor nibs. So they are really nice pens. Um, but I would look for around 350 ish would probably be a fair price. That's getting into, I mean, that's right around sailor pro gear range there. And I think this is probably the better package, um, in terms of, of build and what you get for a pen than the Sailor Pro Gear is. Um, and you get that Sailor nib, but you get it in a, in a big package. You get it in with a, in a nice luxury kind of package. So I think around 350, that's a good price for this pen. Um, other than the price and my initial disappointment, the weight and the build of it, I do think it's a very unique and comfortable pen to, to add to my collection and one that I can see myself using a lot. Like I'm gonna use this thing a lot just because it feels really good. Um, and it's, and it's got that great sailor nib and it, and it, and it just, I can write with a lot with it and it's a handsome pin. I can take it with me a good amount of places. Um, I, it's, I don't think it's for everyone. And of course it's harder to find now. So you're going to have to kind of seek it out on the secondary hand market, but I do think it's a good pen if you can get it for, for a good price and find one, you know, in a good condition, it's a unique pen. You're never, you're not going to get a sailor 18 karat nib anywhere else. And uh, it, it writes great. It, it feels good in the hand, functions well. Um, so that's what that's kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about the Peerless or just cross pins in general. I, I've tried a couple crosses and I'm generally pleased with them. Um, uh, I'm happy with, with the ones that I've tried. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. And for it's a free, quick, and easy way to support the channel and, and uh, other pin related content. Let you know when I release new videos every week. Um, there's exciting things on the way for the channel. I'll kind of spoil a little bit that way. So keep watching. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything coming up. Uh, but there are things and, and that's all thanks to everybody that's watching and, and subscribing. So I, I appreciate all the views and for, for, um, for hanging out with me, checking out pens and paper and ink and all kinds of other stuff. So lots of stuff on the way. And, uh, until next time, thanks for watching and I'll catch you soon.